This is Bill Farmer again. Welcome back to Software Engineering 2FA3, Discrete Mathematics with Applications 2. Today we're going to be talking about regular expressions. So what is a regular expression? Well, we start with a finite alphabet sigma. And this regular expression is defined inductively as follows. Uh, the empty set symbol is a regular expression. Uh, epsilon is a regular expression. And A is a regular expression where A is any member of sigma. And if alpha and beta are regular expressions, then alpha plus beta is a regular expression and alpha beta is a regular expression, and alpha star is a regular expression. And we have parentheses, we sometimes need parentheses around these, but we will drop them uh, by assuming that star has higher precedence than concatenation, and that concatenation has higher precedence than, than plus. Uh, so if, for instance, if I had uh, this, what I really mean by this is this. If we put the parentheses back. So regular expressions were invented by Stephen Claney, uh, another great student of Alonzo Church, and he invented these in 1951. Now we can easily define regular expressions as an inductive set. Uh, has six constructors, uh, one to create the empty set symbol, one for the empty string, and then one for every, uh, we can construct a regular expression from every symbol of our input alphabet, and then we have constructors for union, concatenation, and asterisk. So the regular expressions are an inductive set, and the important thing about regular expressions is we can view them as patterns. Every regular expression matches a set of strings over our alphabet. And we call this the language of the regular expression. And this is defined by recursion and pattern matching as follows. So the language of the empty set symbol is the empty set. The language of epsilon is the set of epsilon. The language of an input symbol uh, or a symbol member of sigma is the set of that symbol. And then the language of alpha plus beta is the union of the language of alpha with the language of beta. And the language of alpha beta is the concatenation of the language of alpha with the language of beta. And then the language of alpha star is the asterisk of the language of alpha. And we say two regular expressions, alpha and beta, are equivalent if they match the same language. OK, so here's a question. Um, most programming languages have a set of identifiers. And we can represent this set of identifiers using a regular expression. So the question is, which of these is the right regular expression? To represent the set of identifiers of a typical programming language. So I'll give you a moment to think about this. Okay, uh, welcome back. Now, in most programming languages, an identifier is made up of, of it's an alphanumeric string, basically. It's composed of symbols which are members of the Roman alphabet, or they're the digits 0 through 9. And usually an identifier must start with a, a member of the Roman alphabet. So A is a regular expression. It represents all strings of members of the Roman alphabet, but notice it does not include the digits. So this, this is clearly wrong. Um, B includes all the digits, 0 through 9, but it doesn't force the first symbol to be an 
alpha, uh, alphabetical symbol. It doesn't force you to be a member of the Roman alphabet, so this is wrong. Um, C is also wrong. The only difference between B and C is C does not include, it, it, the language it matches does not include the empty string, uh, which is true. The empty string is normally not considered an identifier, but nevertheless, it doesn't force the first symbol to be a member of the Roman alphabet. D is correct. The first symbol, this part says the first symbol will be a member of the Roman alphabet, and then all the other symbols, if there are any, uh, they will all be members of the Roman alphabet and digits. Okay, here's another question. Which of the following regular expressions matches a set of words in an English dictionary that contain uh, either the string oat, the string boat, or the string stoat. And sometimes students ask me what a stoat is. A stoat is a kind of weasel that lives in uh, the British Isles. Okay, so oat, we want all st strings that contain oat, boat, and stoat. And if we think about uh, strings of words in the English dictionary, they involve characters from the Roman alphabet, but they also involve hyphen. So we're gonna assume these characters are made of just uh, uh, the Roman alphabet plus hyphen. Okay, so I'm gonna let you uh, take a moment to think about this, think about which is the right answer. Okay, uh, welcome back. Um, so we have four regular expressions here. The first says that these are all regular expressions built from oat, boat, and stoat. Uh, so this would be an example, oat, boat. Uh, so this is clearly wrong. Uh, it's not the, the language that we want is not what we can build from these. It's all the strings that contain these. So the second one says it's all possible strings uh, that follow by strings built, a string built up from oat, boat, and stoat. So this is wrong too. Uh, the next one is closer. It says it's all strings that start with basically any string, end with any string, and someplace in the middle is the string boat or stoat. Notice it does not, a, there's not the possibility of the string oat. So this is wrong. And, but D is right. The beginning can be any string. The ending can be any string. Um, the middle will include a symbol, which is the empty, which will be empty or B or ST. A string, which is the empty string, B or ST, followed by O. So D is correct. Okay, so let's talk a bit about uh, a kind of algebraic structure called a Kleene algebra. A Kleene algebra has a set of values and has a zero and one, these are members of K, and then it has a binary uh, function over K, another binary function over K uh, dot, and a unary function over K. And it satisfies the axioms uh, that are in the next slide. And notice usually we just write a dot b as a b. So here are the axioms. Um, so you can see, you know, there's various kinds of axioms. Um, most of them are pretty, pretty straightforward. We have associativity and community of plus. We have idempotence of plus. That means x plus x is x. We have the identity axiom for plus, so zero is identity axiom. And then we have associativity of, of dot, and we have the identity element for dot. Dot is, um, the identity element is one. Notice we have x1 equals one x. That's because uh, dot is not commutative. And we have annihilator for dot x0 equals 0, x equals 0. We have the associativity laws, or I should say the distributivity laws. 
And then we have some more complicated laws for the asterisk properties. And here, A is less than B stands for A plus B equals B. So this, these are the axioms of the Kleene algebra. Uh, what is interesting is these axioms were first formulated by Dexter Cozen. He's the author of our textbook, Automata and Computability. Um, and here are some couple examples of a Kleene algebra. The first is the set, uh, so the members are going to be uh, the set of all um, subsets of, the st of strings over sigma with the empty set as zero, as one, we have the set of the empty string, and as plus is union, dot is concatenation, and star here is the asterisk property. Another example is a set of regular expressions over sigma, in which the regular expressions are considered equal. So two re we're identifying regular expressions that are equal. In other words, they have the they match the same language. Okay, so here's a question. Uh, which of the following is not a valid property of regular expressions or of cleaning algebras? So I'll give you a moment to think about that. Okay, well, remember we say that two regular expressions uh, Alpha and beta are equivalent if the language that alpha matches equals the language of beta matches. So what this says, A says, is that the language of this regular expression should equal the language of this regular expression. Well, the language of this regular expression is the empty language. But the language of this regular expression is the asterisk of the line. So this equals the language of the empty expression. And we take the asterisk operation. And uh, we know that this will equal the empty set asterisk. And we know that is going to be the set that includes the empty string. So these are not equal. This is not, well, actually, we're looking for things that are not the valid property. So yes, this is not valid. Now, B and C are valid because um, uh, let me write this correctly. The language of this equals the language uh, the union of these two languages, and clearly the union of a set with itself is itself. So this is correct. Similarly, this is correct too, uh, because um, it's we know that the union of sets is commutative. So so these are correct. This is not correct, because basically this says that. The language of alpha beta, we know that's going to be the language of alpha concatenated with the beta. That in general is not equal to the language of beta concatenated with alpha. Concatenation is not commutative in general. Okay. Um, let me see, I'm going to need some space, so I'm going to erase all of this. So what we have looked at, I'm just going to remind you of a few things. We have looked at different automata, and we've looked at regular expressions. So these are the automata we've looked at, DFAs anaphase and anaphase with epsilon transitions. And we have looked at regular expressions. 
So how are these all related? Well, uh, we know that DFAs, NFAs, and NFAs with epsilon transitions, they all accept regular languages. They all accept exactly regular languages. So how do regular expressions fit into this? Well, we have some theorems that will help us fit these in. Uh, the first theorem is, if a regular expression matches a language L, then there is an NFA with epsilon transitions that accepts L. And um, this, the, this NFA with epsilon transitions, we can construct that using Thompson's construction. And this will produce the NFA with epsilon transitions starting with a regular expression. Now, uh, we won't look at this today, but for our next lecture, we are going to look at Thompson's construction. So, so let's think a moment. Uh, so if we have a regular expression, then we can go from there to an NFA that's equivalent with epsilon transitions using Thompson's constructions. And then um, we have this other theorem, theorem 5, it says if we have a DFA that accepts a language L, then there's a regular expression that matches L. And this uses Kleene's algorithm to produce the regular expression. So with these and with previous theorems, uh, we know that regular expressions map the same class of language as finite automata to. They, all of these are basically capturing the notion of a regular language. So regular expressions are called regular expressions because they denote regular languages. So if we go back up here, we know a regular expression, this is by um, theorem 4, right, what we had here, and then if we go to theorem 5, or excuse me, theorem 3, that says that if we have an NFA with epsilon transitions, then we can get an NFA that's equivalent, so this is theorem 3, and then we had theorem 1, which says if we have an NFA, we can construct an equivalent DFA using the subset construction. And then we can go from a DFA to a regular expression using theorem 5 and Kleene's algorithm. Uh, so, so this says regular expressions are equivalent to NFAs with epsilon transitions, which are equivalent to NFA, or I should say, uh, we don't actually have equivalent, we don't actually show equivalence here. We say if we have a regular expression that matches the language L, then there's an NFA with epsilon transitions that accepts that language. Then there's an NFA that accepts that language. Then there's a DFA that accepts that language. And then there's a regular expression that accepts that language. So we, we have a full circle and all of these are equivalent. Okay, so what we're going to do uh, next time, you'll see the start of it, we're going to prove theorem 4. So we're going to stop here. Next time we'll prove theorem 4, which is done using the Thompson construction.